This presentation, I'm going to talk about what is USB, the pros and cons of USB 3, specifically. Where is USB 3 now in the marketplace? How will USB 3 change machine vision and whether or not it is right for you at this time? The goal of this presentation is to provide you with a firm understanding of what USB 3 technology is and how it will impact the machine vision market and more specifically how it will impact you and your machine vision applications. USB 3 is a next generation USB specification. It is fully backwards compatible with both USB 2 and USB 1. Products that are designed against the specification are called super speed USB devices. Super speed products run at 5 gigabits per second, which is 10 times faster than USB 2 and 5 times faster than Gigi and 12 times fi faster than Firewire A. On the right side of this slide, you will see the two specification logos that certify that denote products that are certified against the USB 3 specification. One of the more visible changes to USB products with this introduction of the new standard is the cabling and connectors. In order to reach the new transfer speeds, it was required to introduce new cabling and connectors that can handle the higher data rates. On the cable side, two new twisted copper lines have been added to the standard USB 2 cabling. These lines provide bandwidth required for, to reach the 5 gigabits per second while still providing bandwidth for older USB 2 devices. In essence, these new cables will, are like having two buses where one twisted pair provides a USB 2 signaling and the other two provide the USB 3 signaling. As a result of this change, the connectors also needed to change to support these additional cables. Five new connectors and mating receptacles were created to accommodate the new specification. One new Type A, one new Type B, one new Type Mini B, and two Micro B and AB connectors were created to support the additional cabling. In case you're not familiar with the Micro AB connector receptor, receptacles, they can either be downstream ports like a USB device or an upstream port like, a, like what was found on a host PC. As an example, a cell phone could have an AB port where when connected to a computer, it could act as a USB device and when connected to, let's say, a printer, it could act as a host and be able to control that printer. It should also be noted that USB 2 cables can be plugged into any USB 3 port and the device will work directly. However, that device will only run at USB 2 speeds. And this next slide shows you some examples of the USB 3 connectors that are available. In the upper left corner, you'll see the three typical USB or common USB connectors, the Type A, B, and Mini B. At the bottom, in the far right, you'll also see their mating receptacles. To maintain compatibility, the Type A connector has four additional wires that are tucked in behind the original five. When the USB plug is inserted, the first five wires connect to the I.O., and then the next four connect to provide the super signaling, super speed signaling. This, is allow, this design allows that you can use the same connector with the same form factor for both USB 2 and USB 3. Unfortunately though, it's a little bit different for the B and Mini B connectors. In these cases, the connectors and receptacles had to change to accommodate the additional wires. As you can see, for the, mini, for the B connector, the four additional wires were placed on top, while with the Mini B, they were placed on the side. In the lower right hand side of the slide, you'll see the Micro B and Micro AB connectors and receptacles. It's hard to see from the picture, but the difference between a Micro B and a Micro AB is that the Micro B connector has on the bottom side the two corners pushed in, while with the Micro AB, it's a fully oval connector. One of the challenges that USB 2 products faced was the limited power provided across the USB bus. This issue was addressed with the new USB 3 specification. The designers of the specification realize that products nowadays are higher performing and thus require more power, so they've added an additional 50 milliamps of power at configuration time and another 400 milliamps of power at runtime. This additional power allows USB devices to run without the need of a separate power brick or the use of clumsy Y connectors. If you're unfamiliar with these Y cables, it is a cable that has two Type A connectors and one Type B connector. This cable would draw power from the two Type A connectors with only one of them providing the USB signaling. A small drawback to this additional power is that the minimum voltage is now dropped from 4.4 volts to 4 volts. 
This should not be a difficult challenge for a USB device designer, but it's still something they should be aware of when designing new devices. Knowing that there's a greater need for green products, power efficiency of USB products has been improved versus USB 2. With the induction of new power management features that provide better support for idle sleep and suspend states, USB devices can save power only by drawing it when needed. To further improve the efficiency of USB 3 devices, broadcasted data has been minimized by having data directly directed to specific devices instead. What this means is that in the past, USB devices like a mouse, for example, constantly draws power even when idle. With, U with USB 3 devices that are not active, they can be put into a sleep state and therefore do not need to be active while other devices are running. With all these, all these changes and combined with faster data transfer times, USB 3 devices could see them running at one third to one half less power than their older equivalent USB high speed devices. The next change with USB 3 is in signaling. Obviously, with five gigabits per second data rates, the signaling across the USB bus needed to change. However, the designers, the designers of the specification just didn't stop there. They also changed the way in which the data traffic flows within the USB bus. USB 3 is fully duplex bus, meaning that data can be traveling in both directions at the same time. This is a more efficient model from, from both the data rate perspective, but also from the power perspective. USB devices do not need to wait long time to send and receive data, which translates into a more power efficient product. Combined with this, have also, they've also improved the data transfer model by eliminating the need to pull a device to get data. The new model called asynchronous notification replaces the interrupt transactions used in USB 2. In the past, devices that like keyboards would receive an interrupt packet periodically to query if they had new data. Regardless of whether new data was available, it needed to respond to each packet. With this new method, the device can now respond with a no ready packet and wait, then sit there while no data is available. Later on, when new data arrives, it can then honor the original request by sending an endpoint ready status to the host. Another big efficiency provided with USB 3 is a new burst mode, which allows devices to send multiple packets before receiving the corresponding acknowledgement. In USB 2, a device is required to wait for the host to acknowledge the receipt and acceptance of the data before it could send the next packet. Now, it can simply send multiple packets without the need for the wait for acknowledgement or even faster transmissions on top of the higher bus speeds. On older computers that may not have USB 3, contr USB 3 controllers on board the motherboard or may want to have additional ports, two new adapter cards have also been created to provide USB 3 port. A PCIB PCIe-based desktop card for PCs and a PCMCIe-based card adapter for notebooks and laptops have been created. With all these updates to signaling and devices and cables, standard USB hub also needed to, an overhaul to take advantage of these changes. The USB 3 hub is now the central piece to managing power being consumed across all USB devices. It does this by monitoring the power states of all its downstream devices and adjusting its state accordingly. It also avoids broadcasting packets to devices downstream when possible and routes them to specific ports. If there are multicast packets that need to be sent, the USB hub will only send them to active links, thereby keeping inactive links sleeping to conserve more power. <laughs> 